this is Bashar Kamsaya at the University of Florida. I would like to thank the Endoscopy Journal for giving us a chance to discuss our most recent research study to be published in Endoscopy entitled The Prevalence of Barrett's Esophagus in Obese Patients Undergoing Bariatric Surgery Evaluation, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. We all know that Barrett's esophagus is a pre-malignant condition and we know that it predisposes patients to esophageal adenocarcinoma. Obesity has long been postulated as a risk factor because of the increase in the intra-abdominal pressure, increase in the rate of hiatal hernia, and increased rates of reflux, all of which can contribute to having Barrett's esophagus and esophageal adenocarcinoma. And we wanted to study a particular subset of patients who have obesity, severe obesity, and who undergo bariatric evaluation. Therefore, we conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of the available literature, and we reviewed close to 5,000 studies. Of those, we included 29 studies in the final analysis. Our final analysis included over 13,000 patients, all of whom were obese, and underwent endoscopy in preparation for possible bariatric surgery. We found 114 cases of Barrett's esophagus described in those 13,000 patients. And therefore, the pool prevalence based on random effect modeling was 0.9%, and heterogeneity was moderate at 56%. We conducted several sensitivity analyses in which we found that there was no difference in the pool prevalence of Barrett's esophagus between prospective and retrospective studies, and between studies done in Western countries and non-Western countries, or based on the study quality. Furthermore, we conducted a meta-regression in which we tried to control for GERD and sex, and wanted to look at the relationship between Barrett's esophagus and BMI. We did find a positive relationship uh, in that for each one kilogram per meter square increase in BMI, the prevalence of Barrett's esophagus increased by 0.15%. And so here we report a marginal increase at best of the risk of Barrett's esophagus in obese patients. And the clinical significance of this is not clear to us at this time because it's so small. We hypothesize that maybe there is an interaction between the different risk factors of Barrett's esophagus. For example, we, in a previous meta-analysis, we showed that the more risk factors you have, the higher the prevalence of Barrett's esophagus you do have. However, could there be some negative risk factors? So in this study, a lot of, uh, a majority of the subjects uh, were women who were undergoing uh, bariatric evaluation. And so could the fact that these were women uh, counteract the fact that they have obesity and in doing so lower their risk of Barrett's esophagus? Lastly, another factor that could have contributed to the low prevalence of Barrett's in this population is maybe the lack of attention to the GE junction. Remember, these are patients who were undergoing evaluation for bariatric procedure, uh, and so maybe they were not paying a particular attention to the GE junction. This study, however, shows that we should be paying attention to the GE junction because uh, Barrett's esophagus can be a relative contraindication for some bariatric procedures, especially sleeve gastrectomy, which can increase the risk of reflux and Barrett's esophagus, as we have sh shown in a previous uh, study presented at DDW last year. Therefore, we think that uh, our study will add to the existing evidence regarding the prevalence of obesity uh, and Barrett's esophagus in obese patients. We hope that our study will induce further research on this topic. Thank you very much, and feel free to contact us if you have uh, any questions. On behalf of all the study team, we thank you again very much.